So I'm going to talk about uh, some of the profiling debugging tools, uh, no doubt over the course of uh, yesterday and some of today, you've uh, had some of these referenced, um, or you know maybe they were presented some of the tutorials yesterday, so this will kind of be a review in certain places. Um, hold on one sec, let me turn on captions. Okay, so um, just quick little overview. I'm going to talk about uh, some of the nuances and the different tools available for both uh, debugging and profiling. Um, uh, debugging on the GPU uh, is a little bit different than the CPU because it's asynchronous uh, with the CPU. So sometimes where you detect the error isn't exactly uh, where the error occurred or uh, say the, the current was launched uh, in a different place. And if uh, you are used to working with uh, highly parallel codes. Uh, you know that debugging highly parallel codes like which, what you have in the GPU tend to produce sort of highs and bugs, where the simple act of trying to uh, study it uh, makes the bug disappear. This uh, is uh, quite a difficult problem, but there are tools um, <coughs> available to sort of solve these things. Um, when debugging, uh, I think this was covered elsewhere, uh, for NBCC, uh, the lowercase g flag generates debug information for the host code. Um, you need to use the capital G flag to add debug information for, debug information for the device code. But you do not want to use this uh, debug info when you are profiling. Uh, you want to use the dash line info for NBCC um, as an alternative when you are profiling. And the optimization level that you set affects the debug info resolution. So if you said 03 and, and dash G, uh, that will have significantly less uh, debug info than if you said dash 0 uh, combined with dash G. Um, some compilers support sanitizer flags. Um, I don't believe that NBCC supports this. I'm not sure if Clang does. Um, but you know, hopefully that is something hint, hint, that they will eventually address um, because these features are very nice, like the fsanitize address and data race are very nice for just compiling your code and running it and then just getting a report at the end. Most uh, debugging uh, error tools, or sorry, most CUDA routines return uh, CUDA error T. Uh, and you just, you have it, you want to check whether or not that equals uh, CUDA success. Um, writing error code checking is monotonous. Um, so it's highly recommended to uh, use macros to sort of easily wrap uh, these, these functions runtime API functions that you're calling that you want to check. Um, but doing too much error checking can degrade performance. You want to selectively uh, provide different macros um, that when, uh, you know, the, when you compile with NDebug, it's an empty macro or it just implements the, um, the actual function call. Uh, and then whenever you uh, in debug is not compiled, it actually does the error checking. Uh, one thing to be aware of is if, with respect to that asynchronous stuff, um, if you ever do a CUDA get last error, it will reset the error code. Um, so if you need to check to see if there was an error, but you don't um, want to reset the error code, you use peak at last error. And then uh, the CUDA runtime API also has these, these functions for uh, getting descriptions and names of the error. If you are doing debugging, most of the time, uh, or sorry, lots of times you, you do it simply via, via the command lines. Although a lot of uh, GUIs uh, interact um, or can integrate uh, debuggers into their environments. And this is uh, honestly, if you've ever used uh, you know, like GDB in the command line and ever used it within an IDE, you will 
quickly become a fan of using it in the IV. It is so much nicer to use. Um, you know, but sometimes this requires actual integration with your build system. And for that, uh, it's one of the big, big benefits of using CMake there. Uh, CUDA GDB is the NVIDIA supported debugger. Um, it's pretty much modeled after GDB, the GNU debugger. It's uh, built as an extension. Uh, you simply just run CUDA GB, GDB and then the command options, and then you will get an interactive prompt. You, you type run, enter. Uh, whenever you get the, the error, you can hit backtrace and it will show you the call path to where you're getting it. And then you can print variables, switch between frames and stuff like that. Then there is the uh, CUDA mem check tool, which is a functional correctness checking tool. Um, this is sort of similar to their sanitizer stuff, uh, the sanitizer stuff that I mentioned previously. Uh, it supports an integrated mode with CUDA GDB and it's for detecting sort of memory access and, uh, and, and issues that, that don't cause explicit failures. Sometimes though, uh, printf really will just be the best debugger. Um, and you know, I think, I think all of us have used printf as a debugger um, quite a bit. Uh, usually, printf is also great for enabling um, just sort of log messaging. Um, so you, and if, and this is always nice to have in a sort of code that you're distributing so that if, you know, a user comes back to you with an error, you simply uh, have, um, set, say, set an environment variable, hey, turn on verbosity equals three or something like that, and you'll see you know, values printed out in the code that help provide you context about where uh, the errors are actually occurring. Um, and that same thing with that macro, you should have sort of always on error checking. Um, so let me move on now to profiling. Um, just like debugging, profiling has some nuances. Uh, measuring that performance can degrade to, uh, your performance, unfortunately. Um, hardware counters in particular, the way they are implemented with MVProf, that particular API, um, it sort of serializes the kernel execution um, so you don't get any uh, overlap. And also kernels, or sorry, hardware counters are a finite resource. So if you request measuring too many hardware counters, you actually, uh, CUDA has to uh, replay the kernel in order to collect all the hardware counters. This is slightly different um, than how uh, it works with uh, other hardware counter systems where they um, swap them out at, at, at timing intervals uh, called multiplexing. Um, and also when it comes to profiling, the performance on the CPU still matters. Um, you know, simply optimizing the actual kernel execution uh, isn't, isn't as really as important as uh, optimizing sort of the hosted device communication patterns. Or, or your memory access patterns. So you have to actually sort of look at what your CPU is doing alongside your GPU. Um, and in order to do that, really, when you start profiling, the very first thing, thing you need to do is do a complete top-down profile of the CPU and the GPU. Um, educated guesses on where the bottlenecks are um, just tend not to be dependable, especially when you're initially porting your code to the GPU. Um, and, you know, just all you really need there is sort of lightweight timing information about where things are spent and sort of a visualization of the overlap. And insight systems is, is recommended here. Um, as sort of, uh, you can also use MBProf, but uh, insight systems is the, is the new, um, very nice GUI that NVIDIA has provided for us. The second stage obviously is the optimization. Once you have identified where your bottlenecks are, um, 
Insight Systems, as I said, is good for that high level information for your communication bottlenecks. Insight Compute um, sort of gives you a per kernel breakdown and you can identify computational bottlenecks um, with your memory access and, and occupancy and stuff like that. Once you have optimized the code, especially at a, at a hackathon, um, if you spent you know, a week at a hackathon, optimizing the code, using all these tools, you have things migrated to the, the GPU and they're running well. At that point, you really should take advantage of using the MVTX API and marking the important regions in your code um, that you want to be able to sort of identify later uh, when you are profiling, say a month, month from now. Um, and, and this just sort of helps with visualization. Uh, so you can easily just sort of look back and say, you know, has this region expanded significantly or uh, uh, reduced in its, its runtime compared to this old run? And really uh, do sort of continuous monitoring. The GUIs are very nice um, to use, but they really don't get run all that that often not you know that and and integrating sort of a continuous monitoring of performance that you can refer back to or easily run without a GUI is highly advantageous um, so you you know a, a, a lot of us have simple you know on a, in our CPU code simple uh, CPU timers um, and, and you want to try and integrate something like this into into your code and there are, on the CPU, there are compiler-based tools um, that sort of make it easy to do uh, profiling. Uh, they have sort of built-in profilers to the uh, compiler. Um, like X-Ray is part of Clang, and then they also have uh, um, ways, anyway, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna move on. The Clang, the, the flags above might work with Clang, but I, I haven't actually tested that. And uh, to my knowledge, MVCC does not have a compiler-based way to instrument your code. And as I mentioned, uh, as far as GUIs go, there are, there's Insight Systems, Compute, and MVProf. Uh, there are also several open source tools um, AMD has a, um, a, a profiler, uh, then there's Tau, Scorpy, HPC, Toolkit, they're all um, open source projects that have been around for a long time. They have GUIs, visualization, stuff like that, and a lot of features, because there's, uh, there's really not anything particularly special about Insight systems or compute in so much as they're doing something that an open source tool cannot uh, because they uh, provide APIs for uh, toolkit developers. So NVProf uses the uh, company callback API, which has been around for a while and has widespread support in open source tools, um, Insight systems, is uh, mostly timing sort of stuff, tracing, and it has widespread support. And, but the, the new Insight Compute uh, API is a, uses a new API and in the open source tools, uh, there's, there's minimal support at this point, even though uh, there will soon be quite a bit more. Uh, as far as building something into your software, uh, the CUDA Runtime API, um, has some, some basic utilities that you can use. For example, the CUDA event elapsed time for getting um, the timing between two, two events. It just sort of sticks a timestamp into uh, the, the stream that's being processed. And then there's ways to control an external profiler from your code. So you can start and stop it. The CUDA mem check uh, that I mentioned earlier uses the CUDA sanitizer API. So you can implement sort of a, a CUDA mem check within your code. 
I mentioned MBTX in the decoration. You can include that uh, as a header only source by including that file, you see that right there. And if you use wall clock timers on the CPU, just remember uh, those wall clock timers are kind of meaningless unless you do a sync uh, before them. Oops. Um, so, so the last bit is here at NERSC, we have been developing sort of a modular toolkit so that you can uh, incorporate a lot of uh, these features into uh, your code with ease. Um, we call the project uh, Timory, um, and it, it works by uh, sort of creating single handles that you can use to invoke multiple of these APIs. So you can, you can combine uh, the profiler start and stop with an MBTX marker, or um, you can have direct access to uh, the, the cup D tracing API or the hardware counters. It's available for C, C++, Fortran. Um, and in C++ and Python, you can get direct access to the data uh, for your continuous monitoring. One minute to wrap up. One minute to wrap up, Jonathan. Sure. Oh, excellent. Okay. Um, and sort of the, the key features of this is it's really easy to create new components because they can be composed of other components. Um, and if you integrate it, if you create a pull request and get it integrated into sort of the native uh, stuff. It becomes a standalone Python class too that can be used from Python. Um, and C++ users can create their own components locally. And it's also easy to, if you have an existing API, to integrate um, using that into your API. And you know, we just saw a talk on Roofline, I just added this thing. Uh, there are components for the Roofline on the CPU and the GPU along with scripts for sort of, oh, this hasn't updated. Um, there's also a built-in uh, empirical roof line toolkit along with these, these Python scripts. And that is the end of my presentation. Any questions? Any questions? If I don't see that um, in the chat. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. And then we'll just stay for maybe five or 10 minutes. Sure. Yeah, the, uh, the ERT that I built in is, uh, is available. Um, it's implemented in headers and it actually has, a, has an extension uh, so that you know, the traditional ERT is sort of based on uh, doing FMA operations to estimate the peak. Uh, this al actually allows you to replace those via lambdas um, so that you can estimate the peak of, say, just the a, um, vectorized, a vectorized uh, multiplication operation or a scalar operation and sort of model it after um, the, the, the peak for what you think your code actually might look like. Because not all of us can you know, have codes that can execute a whole lot of FMA operations. I see, cool, thanks. I'm glad to see more profiling debugging tools at NERSC and uh, general HPC community. Thank you, Jonathan.